World is in London next year. How cool is that? The announcement was made on the weekend at the World Championships that Worlds next year will be in London. I mean, London, come on. <laughs> I'm still so hyped about it. What an amazing announcement. And for the first time ever in the history of Pokemon, I know we've had Canada and Hawaii, but they count. We are outside the US. We are coming home to London. We're going to have the World Championships 2020 in London. It's phenomenal and I cannot wait. It's going to be an absolutely amazing event. I will be there 100%. So I hope as many of you as possible get that World's Invite or make the trip over next year and I will get to meet each and every one of you. It will be an incredible weekend. And I can't wait. I am so excited about it. The 2020 season cannot start soon enough. It is starting obviously officially in a couple of weeks time and we will be getting right back into the mix with serious Pokemon content on the channel, playing serious teams, cause exploring, cause building teams and doing lots of fun things to help you guys along the way so that is all to come but before we get into all the serious stuff we've got a bit more fun to have before we end up this week because we are in our final week of our road to rank roulette series obviously i haven't even introduced myself so for those of you who are new to the channel my name is lee also known as osiris if you do enjoy this sort of content do make sure to subscribe to the channel do leave your comments down below and obviously leave a like on the video. We are doing a bit of fun at the minute, so we're having an interim period between the uh, end of the season and the start of the season, I guess. That's what we call it with this roulette series. If you like this sort of content, you can go back. There is a bunch of weeks where we've been selecting random teams, random Pokemon, and putting them to the task on the battle spot, seeing how they've done. We had an amazing week last week, and we're finishing up this week with the series. Before we have a little break and then come back with that serious content getting into the 2020 season, we haven't really had an official announcement per se for the, the rules for the 2020 season, but you've got to assume at the minute with no announcement being made that it will just continue on being into the Ultra series. So lots of fun to have there, lots of cores to explore, lots of more Pokemon to explore, and we saw the World Championships thing like Umbrian popping up and doing well so there are key Pokemon in there that haven't been explored yet there are cores that haven't been explored yet and we will do that on the channel going forward and uh, have a lot of fun doing it as well but getting into today's episode I did say yesterday that we had those bonus buttons that we could activate and I'm gonna activate three of those bonus buttons today so we're gonna start off with our legend maker it does mean throwing uh, two legendary restricted Pokemon up in the air and seeing which one is selected to get a new one out this week. We've got Mewtwo and Kyogre at the minute, so uh, I don't know. I don't really, I can't say off the top of my head which one I prefer to lose, um, but I don't really want to lose any, but I do feel like we need some reinforcements in the team and maybe something that can uh, help us out a little bit anyway. So we'll go over to the wheel now. We'll see which Pokemon is going to be selected to be taken out of the team before we select our new one to put in. So let's activate that Legend Maker button and see what the wheel's got for us. Okay, Mewtwo. Mewtwo's gone. Uh, we had a good run with it, okay? It was good. Mewtwo's featured a lot on this series. I'm a little sad to see it go. I love Mewtwo. And with that Chara bug, we didn't quite get it going, but there is potential there. So something to think about maybe when we actually start thinking about competitive teams in the future. Um, but we'll go straight back to the wheel, see which Pokemon we're going to have in place of Mewtwo. And it's Ho-Ho! Okay, this is good. I like this combination. Always really liked Ho-Ho. Always liked the combination of Ho-Ho, Kyogre. So this is really good. I do like this combination of Pokemon. This is good. Now we've got two more bonus buttons to activate. Next, I'm going to activate our, ooh, our randomizer. Let's just randomly select something from the team and see what the wheel is going to chuck out before we replace it with something else. Sadly, it is Lanoon. I am a little bit sad, and I will say a big sorry to Jason. We didn't actually get the Lanoon going this week, and it's a bit unfortunate as well. Lanoon is a cool Pokemon. Maybe we can revisit it at a later stage, but we have to replace it with something else. So let's see what the roulette wheel is going to give us. Please give us something good. Come on. Come on, roulette wheel. Do it. <laughs> Woo! 
It's wheezing! Okay, that's good. I like wheezing, and it kind of fits in with the Sword and Shield vibe. Hasn't got the top hat or the tash yet, but... We'll make do with this, and Weezing's a cool Pokemon. It's a cool Pokemon because it's got Levitate, it's a Poison type, it's got access to Clear Smog as well, so we can really use it as something to nerf and handle Xerneas pretty well, so happy with that. Um, okay, we need our randomizer now. Um, no, we've just done our randomizer, we need a switch up, that's what we need, we need a switch up. So I've got to select a Pokemon to take out of the team. On balance, I'm going to take out the bus, the Charabug, I think the Charabug makes most sense to take out now um, and see what we have in place of it. So let's hit the wheel for the final time today and see which Pokemon we are going to get in place of our little bus. And it's Rotom Wash! It's Rotom Wash! Okay, Kens, I'm so happy it's finally come out. We've been plugging this Pokemon for absolutely weeks, and we have it finally in the team. So, makeup of the team now. Kyogre, uh oh, oh. Sableye, Landorus Therian, Weezing, and Rotom Wash. So, quite a unique mix of Pokemon, but fun nonetheless. Um, what I've done is, we're going to head over to the team right now. It is going to be on the screen right in front of you now. So, I did say at the start of the week we had two selections for Sableye. We had one for just regular old Sableye and then another for Mega Sableye. So, what I've done now, we've lost the Mewtwo. I'm going to place the Mega Stone on Sableye. Uh, I'm going to take the Scarf off Kyogre. I'm going to make it Primal Kyogre. I'm going to put the Scarf on Landorus. Z-Move on ho -Oh. Then we've got Berry Berry on Weezing and Rotom Wash. The team is down in the description below. There is a Roll Paste, Poker Paste. Check out the details in your own time. And if you're crazy enough and just want to have fun, maybe, try the team out. And if you do, make sure to let me know how you get on with it. But music is on. We're ready to go. I feel confident with this team, actually. I feel good. We saw ho -Oh at the World Championships put in some work, so... It's a good Pokemon. We've got the Flying EMZ on there, so I think it can do some work. Sitting on a rating of 1523, it's not bad for the Roulette series. It's really not. We spent most of the time down in the 1400s, so it's nice to be above water for a change. Hopefully we can stay like that, because we've got our first opponent of the episode, so we'll get straight into Team Preview. So our first opponent today, running a team of Kyogre, Tapu Fini, Whimsicott, Incineroar, Stack Attacker, and Rayquaza. So we've got that Rayogre core, a uh, very strong core that we've seen do so well in the series so far. And then supporting cast, you've got Tailwind options on the Whimsicott, Trick Room on the Stack Attacker. You've got support option there with Incineroar with its Intimidate, Fake Out, Pivot with U-Turn, and then Tapu Fini for the Terrain Control. Um, okay, what are we going to do here? Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Rotom Wash just feels like it can be very, very useful in this match. I don't really know what my opponent got outside of the Whimsicott to hit it for super effective damage. Um, so Rotom is definitely a Pokemon I want to I bring here. Um, I think <sighs> ho is good for the speed control, for sure. Um, I kind of need Intimidate for the Rayquaza and the Stack Attacker. For sure. Uh, I'm going to bring Landorus and Rotom as a lead throwback. Uh, I will bring Kyogre. And the last Pokemon. What do we want to bring? Do we want to bring Sableye? Hmm. Sableye could be decent, I guess. Uh, ho -Oh. Just doesn't like Kyogre. That's the only thing. Um, I'll bring ho -Oh. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Sableye was probably the better one. Because of the the trip the trick room option that my opponent could have, because Mega Sableye is like the second slowest thing in the format, um, just undersped by Stack Attacker in Trick Room. So maybe it was a better choice. But Hot is always good. It's good to bring both restricted, so I don't I don't mind that too much. We we'll lead off with Landorus and uh, Rotom, and we're going to see my opponent lead off with Kyogre and Whimsicott. So we will get this Intimidate off. The Landorus. Um, do I just? I'm just going to U-turn. I think out onto the Whimsicott. Turn one with with Landorus. I don't really want to keep it round on the field right now. We are scarfed, so we could get an attack off into the Kyogre. But whatever the Kyogre really throws out at us now is going to pick up a knockout. Um, and if I can just U-turn out onto the Whimsicott. 
breaks a potential slash there, and I think I will Electra Web as well, just to get some damage onto the Kyogre, slow it down a bit, and if the Tailwind does go up, then we can at least try and counteract that a little bit. But we're going to just see the Kyogre protect here, which is fine. We'll probably see a Tailwind thrown up from the Whimsicott, which it is going to go for. Um... And we'll get some decent damage off onto it with a U-turn and then an Electro Web, which isn't going to do too much. But, I mean, any damage at this point is decent damage. And the Rotom kind of has a free turn here. We'll bring in our own Kyogre because it, it's the only thing we've got that kind of semi-resists what the opposing Kyogre can throw out at us. So, uh, we'll Primal Revert into Primal Kyogre. Mega, Rick, M Mega Kyogre. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. I'm half asleep this morning. I'm sorry. Sorry. So, uh, there's the Electro Web. I'll stop talking rubbish. And uh, we will lower the speed on that Whimsicott by one stage. So, um, what am I going to do here? Do we just Origin Pulse or Protect Kyogre to burn a turn of Tailwind? The problem is, right now, I think Kyogre's sitting in a position where it can take an attack from, like, even a double up. Uh, from both of these these Pokemon. Um, you've got to worry about Endeavor though. That's the only thing I would worry about a little bit on the Whimsicott. If it is Endeavor, it could be a bit tricky to deal with. Um, and it potentially could Endeavor and then Water Spout our Kyogre to death. And if we lose our Kyogre, the match does become a lot harder. I'll just protect this turn. The only reason I wouldn't want to protect is if we see a switch to Rayquaza potentially, and then we can't protect the, the turn after that, which puts us in a little bit of an awkward position. There's the endeavor that we did suspect, so um, and the double into our Kyogre. So we did make the right play there. Uh, Whimsicott avoiding, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, and now I, I do feel like we're going to have to sack something here, um, because I'm going to bring in Ho. -Oh. I don't, I'm not massively keen on doing this, but at the same time, I don't really want um, to lose Kyogre at this point. I feel like Kyogre is probably our most important thing in this match, so kind of preserving it and making sure that we're taking care of it is probably better than than utilizing and taking care of our ho at this point. So we'll just switch out. Um, and I'd imagine my opponent probably go for the same thing. It's a bit of a shame that we missed that Electro Web because this one on the Whimsicott would put it in a position where we um, would be able to outspeed it with certain things. Uh, okay, so there's the Origin Pulse. It does take Hot or down, unfortunately. Uh, we'll get the Electro Web. Um, and this should now put. Yeah, our Landorus is going to be able to pick up the knockout onto Whimsicott. So what we can do is bring in Lando. Uh, we will outspeed both Pokemon now, and we can go for that U-turn into the Whimsicott. I guess the problem is here if the Whimsicott has Protect, which I doubt it does, to be honest, but it means that we can get Landorus back out, and then we've got the Intimidate for later on. And Rotom's not in the worst position here, um, honestly. We can just sit and go for this Electro Web again into the Kyogre and just get some damage off onto it and keep slowing it down. Um, and that's the main thing at the moment for us to do. So like I said, the U-turn should take down this Whimsicott. And it will deny my opponent being able to get any more speed control for the rest of the game. That's the other big thing. It's a shame that we've lost Hot All. Um, and we, well, we could have potentially kept that Kyogre in, but I still think 60 HP that we would have had left, we'd probably go down to an Origin Pulse anyway. Um, Kyogre actually going to switch out, which I don't mind at all. Uh, the Heavy Rain going to disappear. Rayquaza coming in. So I don't mind catching Rayquaza with um, an Electro Web, especially when the Strong Winds aren't active. There's a Protect from Whimsicott as well, which is interesting. So stalling out just to be able to get this this next turn because I think this tailwind ends here. So it's a smart play from my opponent. Uh, we are going to get this electro web and potentially what we can do now is go for a will o wisp into that Rayquaza um, because Rotom. Uh, it's not going to outspeed though. It's really not going to outspeed, but we can still go for the the uh, will o wisp into the the Rayquaza, which is going to be. 
a nice thing to be able to neuter it, especially if it is a more physically built variant. Um, we'll go for that U-turn again, because I do want, even though the Tailwind will go up here, we still want to be able to remove the Whimsicott, because of that threat of the Endeavor. Um, we do need to just get rid of it to stand a chance in this match. And Landorus is going to prove pretty important as well, I think, l like very late game. If we can preserve it to come in and potentially still have Rotom around, then we can freely Earthquake. Uh, we are going to see the Rayquaza Mega Evolve. So this is Mega Rayquaza. I'm not talking junk now like we were about the Kyogre before. So there's the Delta Stream activating. Uh, there's the Tailwind. And the nice thing about pivoting into uh, our Kyogre now is the the only problem is we could potentially take a dragon ascent incoming um which Kyogre isn't gonna really enjoy taking to be honest <sighs> especially unintimidated we are bulky but still we're gonna take a chunk of damage oh it's gone earth power wow Hmm. I don't quite um, get the earth power there. Unless they didn't realise that Rotom was has levitated. I don't know. Maybe a misclick as well. So you can't discount that from my opponent. Okay, but we do get the, the burn onto the ray. So we're sitting pretty nice now. The ray's kind of nerfed a lot. Um, I'm going to stall out a turn of this. Um... I mean, we could switch into Landorus here because if we expect maybe a Thunder from this Kyogre into our Kyogre, we could do that. Although it's risky because then they could. It's easy for them just to click the Origin Pulse button or the the Water Spout button, especially with the Tailwind up. I'm just going to go for an, a safe Electro Web here. It will nullify the the Tailwind on the Rayquaza as a Dragon Ascent. Oh, it's gone into the Rotom. Okay, well, this shouldn't do too much, especially burned. And if it does, we might get lucky and it might proc our bear. Oh, I don't think it's just out of range. Or might be an origin pot. Oh, it is. Oh, and there's a thunder. This will be enough, I think, now. No. Rotom's done so well. Ah, oh, And a crit. But I think that maybe would have taken us down anyway. Um, okay. So this makes life very difficult for us. Because... Uh, what do we lock into? Do we lock into for sure? How fast is that Kyogre as well? Is it going to outspeed our Landorus? Um, more than likely. Yeah, I reckon it will. And what do you go for? Um, because we could just go Origin Pulse. It might be the better option and go rock slide as well. I could have locked into for sure, but I'm going earth power. Okay. Earth power thunder coming, I think. Oh, ice beam. Okay. Yeah, we'll lose Landorus. That's the problem, I think, with the tailwind. We needed to. But we maybe would have been better off just protecting Rotom for one last turn, I think. Um, so there's the Origin Pulse coming out. Oh, we take down the Ray. Okay, after the Dragon Ascent, I guess that makes a lot of sense. The problem is that we can't really beat this Kyogre. Um, because it's got... It's got Thunder. Um, and I don't know if we're able to take it, but... We could... Oh, it's a Stack Attacker got Wide Guard as well. That's the other thing. How many turns of Tailwind we got left? One. This would be a perfect opportunity for my opponent just to throw the Trick Room up as well. Uh, I'm going to go Origin Pulse. I'm going to have to, really, because I can't let the Stack Attack get the Trick Room up. Um, and I think we can take a Thunder from this range. I do. I, I will definitely take a Thunder, but it's whether or not we see Wide Guard. Uh, or if we see Trick Room, it's risky for my opponent. It's easy for us to click this Origin Pulse button. 
Okay, we're gonna see a protect from the stack attacker. Now, if we outspeed the opposing Kyogre, there's a chance we can still win this. Um, because it's likely with protect that the stack attacker doesn't have no paralysis and we do we hit come on come on come on come on we hit okay and if we can outspeed this Kyogre we can win this match as a tailwind gone all comes down to that I guess the speed tie because an origin push should take down the ca the stack attacker let's see let's see let's see come on come on Kyogre ah there's <laughs> there's the white god Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, close game for us today to kick off with. Um, I think the probably turn that we needed to do was um, protect the Rotom. And it was hard where we were forced to really sacrifice something for free um, with that hot oil. And it's just the pressure that the Whimsicott put on and put us in that position with the Endeavor. If it didn't have Endeavor, I think it would have been a little bit different. But very good game to my opponent. A little bit of a shame that we've we kicked off with a loss today. So what's that? That's record wise. I don't think that's very good. What have we done? That puts us to one win, four losses this week. Eek. That's not good. We need to finish positive, uh, which we can still do. So we got one, two, three, four, five. Okay. All we need to do is win out. Easy, easy, easy. So I'm just gonna hop back over, hop back over to this screen. Hopefully. We're just above 1500 so that's the other thing I don't want to fall below 1500 at all I really don't um, ultra recon squad let's go with this track for our next one hopefully it doesn't take too long to find an opponent but if it does in the meantime we can talk about the world championships it was such a good event it was an amazing event uh, and the finals was so good I really enjoyed that the whole event and all the stream matches that I saw um, just in general, uh, very high quality as you would expect from the World Championships and lots of teams. Nothing really surprised me that came out um, in that top cut that I saw. There was lots of things there. The one thing that did surprise me that I didn't see much of, which is just maybe because I'm quite biased towards it, is no Serena at all. Serena. We're going to have to push on with Serena to make it, to, to give it its its chance to shine and when we come back with our serious content um in a, in a week or two for the ultra series because i still believe that serena is still a very strong option in the ultra series i think it's it's so good like there's so many teams rely on priority rely on fake out to get set up and serena just stops that and it's got access to so many good support options we saw how good helping hand was on that umbrian um, and obviously it did a lot of other jobs as well with its dog type and snarl and just being able to disrupt but Serena can kind of act in a similar way um, you've obviously got a way worse matchup against Salamence and Rayquaza because of the, the grass type in there but it does give you a better option against things like Kyogre um, and you know I expect Kyogre to kind of pick up in popularity and I very much expect Eveltal. Eveltal was very close to doing some some really good good things at worlds this weekend um just missing out on those top cut places but uh, i can imagine eveltal probably coming back in a, in a big way in the next few weeks early format anyway and then we're going to probably see more ways for um i'll oh, just text against umbrian <laughs> in general depending on how how much its usage goes up but i think it's quite team specific and we're sitting and we haven't even found an opponent. I'm just wasting time chatting here. So, um, but it's fine. I like I like chatting. So I hope you like hearing about my thoughts on, on this. I do like Umbrian, but I can't see it being a top tier Pokemon. I think it's quite a niche pick and very smart pick for that tournament. And I obviously did an amazing job, but I can't see it becoming like a staple on, on most teams. It's uh, It does a role, but I think uh, there's maybe better Pokemon in different builds anyway at least in my opinion but uh, it's all about that i think that's that's it's such a good example it's all about finding the gems and using them to exploit the format at the time and that's what you've kind of got to do if you want to um make a big splash sometimes anyway uh, so we've got an next opponent cc uh, so we'll it's the same archetype let's see well we get another chance at it let's see what we can do in this one so our next opponent running another Rayoga team of Rayquaza, Incineroar, Kyogre, Tapu Koko, Celestila and Gengar. So we've 
possibly got uh, dual megas on this team between the Gengar and the Rayquaza. Uh, so two mods to this team. There's very little speed control on my opponent's team. He probably got Icy Wind on the Gengar, Electro Web maybe on the Tapu Koko, but outside of that, not very much at all. Uh, you've got to worry about the Wide Guard on the Celesteela uh, to block lots of our spread attacks. Um, hmm. What are we going to do though? So, I do feel Rotom is very good here again. Uh, we do need to be a bit careful with the Tapu Koko. Uh, but we could... And again, like, Scoff Landorus does so well in this match. It's It's got the ability to pivot out quickly. Maybe we don't lead with um, Rotom though. Maybe Rotom's better to switch in on something like Kyogre. Um, but what do we expect my opponent to lead with? I expect Tapu Koko to come out. Um, oh, we've got to be quick. Let's go. Kyoga, Rotom, and ho oh, 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 I think we're going to... Uh, time it out. I think we're going to end up with Sableye in the back, which might work out all right. I don't know. Um... Sableye, what set have we got on it? Just uh, the foul play, uh, shadow sneak, recover, fake out. So, I mean, the fake out's quite nice if we need to create some room for ourselves, but the whole, oh, I, I feel would have been better in this matchup, um, especially because it has Tailwind. So, we are going to see Celesteela and Tapu Koko come up for my opponent. We're going to see a wide guard straight away or not, I wonder. Um, oh, if we only had Earth Power, it would be really good here. Because um, the only other problem is, what we could potentially see is, if we go for the Earthquake, um, we could see Wide Guard from the Celesteela. And the problem is, I'm going to go Earthquake, I'm going to go Earthquake, I'm going to switch out Kyogre into Rotom here. I mean, we could protect Kyogre as well. Could be an option. Might be a better option. Let's try it. Just if we see the Coco protect and the Celesteela get, uh, yeah, we're going to see it. And um, Rayquaza, yeah. This, uh, okay, yeah, we're kind of walking into a bit of a trap ourselves here, so, I mean... We've still got Kyogre out on the field, so it's not the worst. We'll probably see the Celesteela go for... Oh yeah, it's going for the, the wide guard. We really need... It. This is probably why it would have been better to switch the Rotom out. Because um, we really need to switch Landorus out now. Um, do we go into Rotom? Yeah, we'll go into Rotom and we'll go for an Ice Beam into Ray. Probably a Salt Vest Ray. But if it does Dragon Ascent, it's still going to take a chunk of damage from our Ice Beam, which is fine. And it's going to definitely chase down our Kyogre. You've got to imagine it wants to chase down the Kyogre here with the Dragon Ascent. Ooh, Icy Wind. Wow, okay. Nice. So I'll drop in our speed stat by a couple of stages. And the Celesteela will probably go for a Leech Seed, I'd imagine, here. Yeah, so we get the Ice Beam. Oh, we freeze! <laughs> oh, roulette! <laughs> there we go. Uh, Ray's out of action here. So that's fine, don't mind that. We're going to see Leech Seed onto our Kyogre here. Um. I think I want to get Kyogre off the field, reset these Leech Seed drops. Could we go for a Will-O-Wisp into Celesteela or just Electro Web? Might be more useful, especially into that Rayquaza. Um, although the Will-O-Wisp will be very useful. It's just, I think, I just feel like the Celesteela might protect here. It might feel threatened from the Rotom coming in anyway. I'm going to just Electro Web. And I'm going to bring in Landorus. I just want... I don't want Kyogre being leech seeded and sapped away the whole time. We are going to see the Rayquaza switch out. Um, it is going to bring in the Tapu Koko. Unless we see a wide guard here. Which we may do. I don't know. We 
we'll get another intimidate onto the Celestia, which is nice. Um, I just protect, yeah, it's threatened by this raw, so I'm thinking that maybe. Now, the one thing we could potentially go for here is for a fissure into the core core. If we expect it to stay in, that's the thing. Um, but the Earthquake, I, I do think we're probably going to see a Y guard here from Celesteela. So I'll go for a Will O Wisp, take advantage of that. And I'm going to go for a U turn into Core Core. Because I think it probably still switches out. Yeah. And Rayquaz are coming back in, which is fine. Because this means now that we're, we're able to pivot in our Kyogre and, and get our rain up onto the field. So, yeah, there's the white guard. And we'll be able to get this, this burn onto it. And we'll get Kyogre in. I think the, with the white guard, though, it does make it very difficult to get our Kyogre kind of going in this game. Because we can't really utilize... A water spout origin pulse. This is where like scalds may be a better option over origin pulse. And it's like back in a 2016 format, if I was going into a tournament, I'd always kind of prefer scald um, as an option because why god just completely shuts you down. And I, I can see the benefit of having origin pulse on Kyogre because it's a strong spread attack, but at the same time, when you're in these positions where um, we'll go for our hydro pump and we'll go for an. We'll go for a water spout. I'm just going to water spout just in case we don't see a, a wide guard here. So we might see a switch in. And the Celestealer might try and get a leech seed off. It might, my opponent might think well, he's not going to go for the spread attack because I've, I've already revealed wide guard. So it's easy for me just to click that button and get that attack off. And if, if they don't, then we punish it. And that's the thing. But we do see the wide guard come out, which is fine. Um... So we do, we do get blocked. But we'll get some decent damage onto the Celesteela now with our Hydro Pump, especially in the rain. I mean, it's not bad damage at all. It's not ideal either, but it's, uh, it's damage nonetheless. So, my electric terrain does disappear. Um, I think what we'll do is switch Rotom out to Landorus. And we will protect Kyogre. Because I feel like the Coco attacks into the Rotom here. If it goes for an electric type attack. Because I think the, the protect on the Kyogre is pretty obvious from us. So I think he probably wanted to try and make some headway by attacking into the Rotom. Um, not to go into a potential protect on the Kyogre. And that's kind of my hope. Thunderbolt, yeah. And then Leachied, yeah, into that slot. But that's fine. Because we're kind of going to force the Coco out anyway now. Um, like we are getting a bit punished by these y with this Y God support. And our Rotom as well as with that Thunderbolt, its life is a little bit more difficult. Um, okay, so. I'm tempted to go Earthquake here. But I do think we just see another white guard. There's no reason for my opponent not to. Let's go U turn into Coco. Let's switch out into Rotom. Or did we bring in Sableye here? Could Sableye do anything? Hmm. Yeah, if we do this, then we've got the fake out. We've got fake out with Sableye, so we can actually utilize that to stop the wide guard the next turn and try and get an attack off with Kyogre, especially if the Coco goes out here. Oh, it's just going to protect. Okay. So we have blocked there. Oh, we avoided. Oh, that is that big for us. Um. But we'll go Mega Save Light. I think I'm gonna. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just gonna double tap into the core core. Because we've got Magic Bounce, so we can 
uh, with Mega Sableye, the Leech Seeder bounced back onto the Celesteela. So we don't need to worry about being Leech Seeded by the Celesteela here. And if it does decide to go for it, that's fine. Uh, and here he is, Mega Sableye. I don't want to take a Dazzle and Gleam either, so that's why I want to go into the Coco. Okay, we're going to see the Wide Guard. That's fine. Donk. And then a U-turn. Then maybe it's better to get. Mm. Rotom in. Because I need to force this Coco out, really. So, what we could potentially do now is protect with Rotom, switch into Landorus with a Sableye. Hopefully my opponent knows about the Magic Bounce and knows not to lead seed into that slot, which gives us a free switch into Landorus. And then the next turn, we're kind of pressuring the Coco again. I think I'm gonna have to end up going for a for sure into that slot. It's just I don't wanna be locked into it. That's the only thing. It's so early in the game as well. My opponent's got so many options. We're going to see the Gigavolt Havoc. Oh, it's a Twinkle Tackle. Okay, this is going to be into Landorus. They're going to try and remove that Sableye from the field. Okay, so it's not the Gigavolt. And we do get rid of the Z-Move. It shouldn't take down Landorus. Yeah. Wow. Okay, I didn't expect it to take Lando down. Really didn't. Huh. Oh, okay. Now we've lost our way to deal with Coco. Uh, that's not... That is not great at all. Um, hmm. Uh, it's not good. Not good. Uh, I'm going to have to go for Electro Web slow down this Coco, so when we bring in Kyogre, hopefully we can outspeed it. This has been such... Yeah, okay, we're going to see the Coco go for the Protect. Hopefully we can get an Electro Web onto the Celesteela. Problem is as well, like foul play is not really doing very much to the Celesteela at all. We could double target into the Coco for sure, uh, with a Hydro Pump and a Shadow Sneak. That might be enough to get it, because I don't think the Coco is able to take down either Sableye or Rotom here, and I think. We'll probably see the Celesteela. Yeah, it's going to attack into Sableye, I'd imagine. Let's go and Volt Switch. Okay, into Rotom. We're going to see Rayquaza come in. There's a void, and there's a leech seed into Rotom. Okay, we really want the Celestia to to uh, leech seed into the Sableye. That would be ideal. Okay, I think I've got to make the just try and get Kyogre out into the field now because I need to try and put some pressure on, and just go for a foul play into the ray. Which should take it down. Um, and if the Celesteela goes for the Leech Seed into the Sableye, it will bounce back. So it means that the, the Celesteela will be Leech Seed, which will be really helpful for us to get rid of it. This is just so back and forwards. And I think we're lucky getting the Freeze onto the Rayquaza. But the thing that we when we've lost Landorus due to that Twinkle Tackle, which I didn't expect it to actually take down, but it's a lot more powerful than I actually think we thought it was anyway. So uh, there's a Leech Seed. Ah, uh, nice call. Okay, so my opponent's making all the right decisions here. Really nice play there. 
um, and we'll get this power play into the rear which will take it down <sighs> so this, I, I feel like it's going to come down to Celestila the end game I really do Coco going to inevitably come back in now Okay, so it's recovering, man, this is like dragging on and on and on, isn't it, this game? But I feel like we can eke out a win maybe here. It depends, yeah, it's a Kyogre finally coming in for my opponent. And I think the problem is the wide guard does so much work for my opponent. Hmm. And we really need to utilize... Yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? I think we have to switch in Rotom. Hopefully we can... Uh, what do we do with Sableye? Can we take a double up? I don't know. I don't, we've got to go for a foul play into the Kyogre. It's probably our best option here. Foul play is going to do nothing to the Celesteela. Just because of it, the burn on it. There's a water spout. Can we both take it? I don't know. Oh, we do. Okay, so that should just... Procaberry on a Rotom, which is so, so, so useful for us. It's interesting that we didn't see the Wide Guard there. And another Leech Seed, yeah, scouting out the switch again. <laughs> so my opponent doing all the right things. Yeah, we get some decent-ish damage onto the Kyogre. The problem is the, the, the Tapu Koko. Um, if we, yeah, I just don't see us being able to, to deal with it. And just the sheer, just the, the construct of this core makes it so, so strong. Um, we'll go for a, and I guess a Shadow Sneak into the Kyogre. There's a problem with Mega Sableye, it's so slow if you haven't got the, the trick room to support it, it, it does become difficult to uh, to get going. So there's another water spout, we should take this with the Rotom. Yeah, and we, uh, I mean, I would love to get a critical hit. Hydro Pump, it would be very helpful here to get rid of this thing. I still don't think it's going to be... We'll have enough in the tank to deal with the, um, the Celesteela, though. Um, so, do you see it recover a little bit with leftovers and these leech seeds? Can it just be enough to sap everything away? And I think the next turn, we'll probably see a wide guard... Um, and another water spout will be enough to get our autumn. Um, I mean, the only thing we can probably do is go Hydro Pump. And then we're banking on an Ice Beam Freeze and being faster than the opposing Kyogre, which I don't expect we are. Celesteela so actually going for the Protect here, so we could have went... And they're calling all the mind games, you know, they're making all the right plays. We're not faster, we'll lose Rotom here. Um, yeah, and we're going to get an Ice Beam into... Kyogre. My opponent knows we're not going to launch these attacks and we'll probably click into Water Spout the next turn. And <laughs> now, my god. Ah! Oh, okay. Really difficult call. The Celesteela is the big problem here for us, especially with the White Guard and how re reliant we really are. Like, when we actually delve into the games, we're so reliant on our spread attacks. And when we haven't got. Uh, single target attacks to kind of hit the Celesteela with it makes it super difficult. We're going to see an Ice Beam from the Kyogre come out. Uh, we'll take that pretty comfortably. The, now we do Origin Pulse, there's no Wide Guard coming out, so we will be able to potentially pick up the knockout onto the Celesteela, not the Kyogre, but the big problem is going to come in now where it's going to be the Tapu Koko, and we got no way to beat the Koko now, especially with its terrain up. Um, it's just going to be able to just donk, donk us uh, in one shot with a... Uh, a thunderbolt so here we go let's see if we can do it origin pulse somehow the thunderbolt could miss they could miss click and go dazzling gleam ice beam again <laughs> but we're not gonna see that okay so we are gonna lose this one takes us down to one win this week five losses not very good we've got four matches potentially left if we can win those last four we'll have a bonus match on friday to try and tie it up um, and finish the week in style um a little bit disappointing today but we've made all those changes we're going to take a bit of betting in to get used to and um, but we'll be back tomorrow with more action thank you so much for tuning in my friends have a great day and i'll see you all for the next one so until then take care and bye bye